As a fairly new entrant to the Turbo and PC Engine scene, I've faced a lot of hurdles, specifically ones that had to do with game price and rarity. I mean, it's been over 25 years since the TurboGrafx-16 was released in the US, and it's become one of the most highly sought after platforms in the retro gaming community. Then my friend Ricky over at Bitpop linked me to this website of a small group of passionate PC Engine fans called PCE Works. They reproduce expensive and hard to find games and create something of a special edition out of it. Now I am a big proponent of playing video games on their original hardware. And one of the reasons I really enjoy video game reproductions is that I can play fan translations and hacks almost as if they were officially made. As a new owner of an RGB modded Duo R, this seemed like an awesome opportunity. So I contacted them. They told me they had a brand new collection of four games in the works and they were kind enough to provide a promotional set for me to check out once it was finished. This is PC Engine Memories, Turbo Duo Edition. A limited edition box set that contains four individual US released Turbo Duo games. Bonk's Big Adventure CD, Dungeon Explorer 2, Godzilla, and The Dynastic Hero. Now the original versions of all four of these games sell individually on eBay for anywhere to 250 to 900 bucks which, as you can guess, is pretty intimidating to someone new to the console. Now sure, these aren't official versions, and I realize how much that means to a lot of people, but this is an entirely different beast. It's a unique set for people that can't afford to purchase those original releases, but give them something really cool and unique for their collection. The attention to detail on this set is crazy. The physical box these come in reminds me of the quality of the work and designs displayed with their Lunar and Arc de Lad box sets. Each game includes their own obi strip, or spine cards as they're often referred to. The artwork for each game is a mix between the classic and a new original design to create a unified look between all the games in the set, but also retain their original feel. Cracking open the seal on the games, you'll find that each has a full color manual. These are also completely redone from the original releases. I love that they retain a lot of the tropes of an 80s and 90s style instruction manual whether it be enemy descriptions or off-the-screen style screenshots. Everything here feels really authentic and brings back those days of pouring over the instruction manual on the way home from buying a new game. Each game also has a color print label on a silver bottom CD. These designs don't really match the real versions, but it's totally fine. They're actually a bit more detailed than the original releases were. Finally, this set has the added role of celebrating Godzilla's 60th anniversary, which I think is a lot of fun. A nice little bonus included with this set is this fold-out Godzilla artwork. But hey, games are for playing, right? So how are the actual games included inside this set? I mean, that's what really matters when all is said and done. So let's take a look. Dynastic Hero is Hudson's version of Wonder Boy and Monster World. You see, Westone, the creator of the Wonder Boy series, had a deal that allowed Hudson to make their own versions of Westone's games, as long as they changed certain elements. The most popular example of this is Adventure Island. Dynastic Hero is a side-scrolling action RPG that shares some elements with Metroid. That means you wander around the world looking for items that open up new paths and areas. It's practically identical to Monster World, but the character designs are way worse. I was also hoping that this might have CD versions of Wonder Boy's music, but it doesn't. The compositions are totally new, and not nearly as good. Though it's not exactly bad either, it's even got a theme song with singing and everything. I remember when things like this used to blow me away. Despite the changes, Dynastic Hero is, at its base, an awesome game. And it's absolutely worth playing in any form, if you have the chance. Bonk's Big Adventure is the third game in the series. Even though I have all three on the Virtual Console, I've only really finished the first one, and I thought it was just okay. Bonk 3's big new gameplay enhancement is being able to turn into Giant Bonk and Tiny Bonk. These different forms are integral to progressing through a level, as you can only access certain passages in one form or the other, mostly the small one. The first Bonk was a pretty straightforward action platformer, but in the sequels, it's become more of a free roam inside of a level until you find an exit type of game. Bonk 3 came out on Hue Card as well, but this version adds obvious CD quality music and a two-player simultaneous mode. Unfortunately, I couldn't try out the latter because I don't have a turbo tap. Overall, Bonk 3 is pretty good and I think I need to spend a bit more time with it for it to really click with me.
Dungeon Explorer 2 is an overhead action RPG much in the style of Gauntlet. You choose one of eight character classes and set out to rescue the king's daughter. Every character has a projectile attack and you kill as many enemy gates as possible while moving through the world. In my time with this game so far, I've had a hard time figuring out where I need to go. But I guess that's kind of the point. It is Dungeon Explorer, after all. Apparently this game is up to five players, which just seems insane to me. Of course, once again, I don't have a turbo tap to test this out, but I feel like it'd probably be awesome. The music is great. I especially love the town music. There's just something about that early 90s CD game music that really is a time warp of nostalgia for me. Dungeon Explorer 2 was, believe it or not, localized by Working Designs, one of my favorite publishers of the 90s. It was, however, commissioned by NEC themselves, so it lacks any of the liberties that Working Designs usually took. Hearing the voice of Galleon himself, John Truitt, as the narrator, definitely brought a smile to my face. Though evil endures and legends don't die, the hero exists in a blink of time's eye. <laughs> Godzilla is kind of the main event of the box set. I grew up watching Godzilla movies during Monster Madness marathons on Saturdays, so you could say that I was more than a little hyped that this game had such an enormous presence in this package. Since the Turbo Graphics only had a two-button controller, the gameplay is a bit limited. Don't go in expecting Street Fighter II level complexity here. Out of those two buttons, I was very surprised to find that one of those was reserved for jumping. So that leaves you with a single attack button, whose moves change depending on which direction you press at the same time, and how long you hold down the button. You also have special moves you can perform if you combine Street Fighter-esque D-pad motions with button presses. You know, like Godzilla's trademark fire breath. But to pull off these more powerful moves, you gotta have enough energy in this secondary attack meter. The fan service here is off the charts, and it made me pretty giddy upon starting the game. It features 16 monsters from different movies, each with their own different battle cries. As far as I can tell, you can only play as Godzilla in the one-player game, which is kind of a bummer. I love the little details, like Jet Jaguar fighting Gigan in the background of the Megalon fight. It even has music direct from each movie. In fact, there were two music tracks that were removed from the US version that have been restored in this reproduction. All in all, this is a really great game for a Godzilla fan like me. But I don't know how far it will go for people that aren't. As you can see, there's nothing world shattering here, but every game included is pretty solid and well worth playing. But luckily, if you're not interested in some of the games available in the box, PCE Works will eventually be selling each game separately. This will be the best option for people that prefer a hyper curated game collection. I gotta say though, the amount of love that went into every inch of this physical box set is evident from the second you lay your eyes on it. This group is super passionate about the PC Engine. They've really gone above and beyond delivering its history to people that might have missed it, like me, or might simply not have been there at all. So needless to say, I'm very grateful for the existence of this set, and I'd honestly rather have this than the original releases. Yeah.